In this video we're going to look at fitting the official Suzuki reversing camera. This is a UK model fitted to a UK car by the way. In the camera kit you get a set of instructions, uh, some cabling bits and pieces, uh, cabling protector, uh, various fitment pieces uh, including sticky back plastic and that to stick in place, a uh, camera itself and a long lead to fit from the front of the car to the back. As with all Suzuki kits, the instructions are pictorial, hence this video to help make it clearer for you exactly how it all goes together. If you wish to buy one of these cameras, it is available from the Big Jimny store from the link at the top of the screen. Just to emphasize, this is a UK SZ5 and the camera is only matched to this unit. Uh, some markets have uh, similar units, uh, but the cameras are different, so be careful before ordering if you're not ordering in the UK. First step is to remove the uh, radio itself from the car. The way to do this is to prise off the trim around the radio, the bottom bit of the trim. Here I'm using a proper trim tool uh, simply pulls off the bottom of the radio and then undo the two screws uh, underneath the radio which will enable you to pull the radio forward. The radio is then held in by two pegs on rubber so what you need to do is to give it a sharp pull once the screws are removed to get it out of its uh, sort of rubber mountains that are behind the radio itself. With the radio pulled forward you can then release all the cables at the back. The cables only fit in the correct socket, so there's no need to really mark them up as to where they go. As you can see, they're color coded, some of them. Uh, some of them are quite stiff because the radio is new. You then remove the glove box. And this is done by squeezing the two back panels of the glove box together. Okay, this is really difficult because the car's so new that uh, nothing is uh, soft and squeezable. Um, I uh, cheated a bit there to get that free and then remove the trim along the bottom of the door. Again you can see me using a trim tool. As with all work on trim I recommend that you do it in hot weather uh, when the trim is all nice and soft and doesn't uh, actually break or snap as you uh, pull it away. Once the side trim is free, you then move on to the trim at the front in the foot. While it's a bit dark to film in there, it is held in by a normal set of trim clips which you can pull clear. And that means you can then completely remove the trim from the corner of the uh, foot well. We now move inside the car and remove the seat. Uh, the, the people claim you don't need to do this, but I do it because it's in the instructions. You do this by giving the seat a firm pull upwards uh, and then with it in the upward position and remove the uh, connectors for the seat belt alarm circuits uh, which are fitted in the UK. With the base of the seat removed we then move round to the back of the car uh, and start work there. Around the back of the car we have to remove the box. Um, this is the SZ5 trim box in the back. It just lifts straight out without any additional uh, screws or anything to undo. It just comes away. And with that removed, we then have access to remove the carpet in the floor. That just lifts straight out. Either side of the seats at the back are two plastic clips. Uh, these lift straight out. They go vertically up. Uh, but they can be very stiff, particularly if it's all new, uh, like our car is. Okay, Lift them out, lift them clear both sides, one one side, one the other. We then remove the rear trim. These are fitted with little push button uh, retainers. You need to slide your screwdriver blade in the side of the clip and there's a little recess, you'll be able to see it, and then that pops the centre of the clip out. Uh, once the clip's out, you just throw it away on the floor. Uh, obviously you keep them for safety really and there's one of these uh, plug type clips at the front. 
With all the clips removed, it is then possible to lift the side panel out of the car. I did this by hand, popping all the little poppers along the side at the top and down the front. I find that once you get it going, hand is the best way to do it. And here I just go and release the clips at the front as well. Again, as all the main clips are out, the ones at the back can be just pulled out by hand. Uh, you have to manipulate it around the door trim. Now, uh, the SZ5 has a power socket in the boot, so you have to remember to disconnect the power socket uh, before you try and remove the complete trim panel. Underneath the car at the back, we then got to disconnect the wiring from the bumper. It's behind this fold-down plastic clip, and the little grey connectors are really, really difficult to pull out. I can't show you them because it's dark under there, but they were really difficult. You have to press in the clip. Next stage is to remove the bumper. It's held up by bolts, M, well they're not M10 bolts, they're 10 millimeter bolts. So they take a 10 millimeter socket, uh, plus again, some of those push button uh, style plastic trim clips that you then pop out with the uh, blade of a screwdriver. You, go, you, you have to release them round in the wheel arches as well, and then the whole bumper removes uh, and put it away somewhere safe where it won't get scratched. Now we undo the bumper itself. The fittings behind there are tiny little clips again. Um, you'll probably find they're jammed with mud, so get the mud out of them before you uh, uh, disconnect them, otherwise the little tags won't work. You then unscrew the plastic cover that fits uh, basically across the back of the bumper, which is where the camera is going to go. With that removed, uh, you can then access uh, the actual part on this strip where the camera will fit. Um, there's a little fold-out cover, um, which is a blanking plate, uh, which needs to be cut away from the tag where it is. Uh, so once it's cut away, you're then left with a mounting point uh, within the plastic uh, piece into which the camera screws. Before we actually fit the camera, we have to reassemble uh, this uh, piece of plastic around the other way for the camera to screw it in, reconnecting up all of the lighting wiring while we do it, pushing it back into its mounting clips. Also, we have to put some of this uh, plastic sheathing that you get in the kit onto the uh, end of the camera wire. In the instructions, it tells you to cut the one piece up into three separate lengths of measured uh, length so it gives you the measurements cut it all up into the correct uh, length and then what we're going to do is take one of those lengths um, I think it's the smallest one at this stage slide it onto the uh, camera lead and tape it you can see it taped here with red tape and then you can see that I've screwed the camera into the mounting point on the bumper back on the car and we now have to fit the wire in here so they recommend that you clean up the surfaces with an alcoholic cleaner to make the surfaces uh, nice and clean, ready to take. One is some foam uh, strips. These are stuck into position both on the outside edges of the metal and on the inside in the second uh, where there is another metal edge. This is to stop any cables from fraying on the metal uh, in when they vibrate in the car. Here I am putting the uh, rubber strip onto the inside as well. Again it's quite a dark picture I'm afraid up underneath the car but hopefully you can just see where the rubber strips have gone across the edges of the metal uh, panel mouldings to stop the fraying. Then you take another piece of the plastic sheathing and you wrap it around the end of the uh, lead that is going to be pulled through the car uh, through to the front. So this is actually that long extra bit of lead that you've got. So we've wrapped some tubing around it and some tape. And we also protect the connector at the end again with another one of those rubber strips. This is where the bumper is going to connect the bumper and the camera are going to connect into the car loom. So this is effectively the end of the, the car loom. 
You then use a piece of wire, I'm using an old bent coat hanger. You pierce a hole down through the rubber bung uh, so that you can, uh, from the inside to the out as you can see here, and this will enable us to um, pull the uh, wiring loom that's going to run the length of the car into the car. Um, of course you have to start it from the, uh, the, the radio end, you're attaching to the, uh, this piece of wire, you're attaching the radio end of the wiring loom. So I've taped the two together with uh, insulating tape, like so. Make sure it's all nice and smooth. And then from the inside of the car, you pull the wire back through. Here you can see the red insulating tape appearing as I pull the cable back through into the car. And you then pull all of the wire right through until you get to the point where you get to the uh, plastic sheath in that you have taped on to the other end of the wire. Make sure that the actual bung itself is properly seated otherwise it will uh, let water through into the boot. Pull the wire carefully through, making sure that the uh, other end, the, the end that's uh, got the sheathing on, uh, doesn't get caught on anything, uh, otherwise you'll fracture one of the wires inside the loom. Next we refit the bumper. This is a straightforward process. The bolts and the uh, little plastic trim clips all just fit back in exactly where they came from. Uh, there is no real uh, difficulty in putting this back on. It's actually very simple to remove. I was surprised at just how easy the rear bumper is to uh, get, take on and off these cars. Do remember at this point to reconnect the lights underneath the back uh, and replace the little plastic cover that goes over the connectors. Inside the car we then feed the wire along the existing wiring looms uh, and then attach it with the cable ties uh, to the existing cable. You go all the way across the back of the boot and down through the uh, side trim of the door uh, up through the dashboard behind the glove box. There's a diagram in the Suzuki uh, manual on where it goes but it's pretty straightforward just attaching it to the various bits of the existing wiring loom until the ends of the wires protrude out by the uh, radio. Now you have to connect uh, the new connector to the ends of the wires. The wires have been protected by a polythene sheet, sheath which needs cutting off. Uh, you then need to get the wires in the correct order as per the instruction manual and push them into the green plastic clip to make up a new connector. You can then reconnect all the uh, different connectors into the back of the radio and refit the radio with the two screws. So with all the panels off now is the moment of truth to see if it works. So with the ignition on, uh, you can pop the car into reverse and there is the reversing camera working. You can just see the uh, markings on the screen showing where the back of the car is. So it's all good, it's all installed. Uh, we can congratulate ourselves and now start putting back together all the other panels. In, as in all good manuals, the uh, procedure is the reverse of the disassembly. So basically it's a matter of putting back all the trim. So that concludes the video. If you found it useful, let me know in the comments below or if you spotted any uh, things I could have done differently or better, uh, equally put it in the comments. So thank you and uh, talk to you on the next video.